Hello, Mary. I'm very happy that uh, we are together tonight to talk a bit about your own history and uh, the summit, where you will be one of my favorite uh, guests of honor. Uh, you will present uh, the film night uh, as a pioneer of computer animation. And well, my first question, of course, goes back uh, to the very beginnings uh, of your uh, computer animation work. Um, it was probably somewhere in the 20th century. Uh, so how <laughs> did, <laughs> how way how, back, way back in the 20th century. Yeah. How did it come that you got in touch with computer graphics and computer art and moved into computer animation? Okay, first of all, thank you for inviting me to the summit. I'm looking forward to it. And um, I started when I was studying architecture. And I got interested in filmmaking when I saw the work of uh, a couple of filmmakers, Jordan Belson and uh, Norman McLaren and, and people like that. And this led me to the work of filmmaker John Whitley. And uh, that's when I discovered that he was making animated films with computers. And that idea had a profound effect on me, and I decided that that's what I wanted to do. Can you give us some some era picture? Which years? When did that happen? Yes, this was 1972, 70. and I went to Los Angeles and enrolled in the California Institute of the Arts, and I tracked down Whitney to see if I could apprentice with him. He was okay with that, but he wasn't working on a film at that time. But through a Cal Arts connection, I was able to get access to the films at the Jet Propulsion Lab, the NASA lab. And that's where I made my first film. Okay, so you started as an architect uh, and did you get in contact with machines already, with computer machines, because architects maybe use them for their work? Uh, not at that time. There was no computers in the architecture department. Uh, I did take a course in computer science, a, a uh, elementary course in Fortran programming to see what it was like. But it didn't seem that interesting to me at that time. We weren't doing any graphics. It wasn't, uh, it was just grade point averages. So I, I, I didn't think much about it until I heard about the uh, Whitney's computer animation. Okay, so th th this somehow intrigued you to move into that field? Yes, totally. I just said, that's it. I'm, I'm going to California and I'm going to make computer animated films. So John Whitney, of course, is, is the icon, is the hero, is the godfather of, of everything. So can you tell uh, us a bit more about your contact with him and, and also about his person? Was he nice? These important humans tend to be a bit complicated. Well, it was complicated, but it was very nice. Uh, I enjoyed working with him very much. Um, after I made my film at, from uh, the Jet Propulsion Lab, um, Whitney called me and said that he had been given uh, computer time on a company where he had worked, and uh, but they weren't giving a, a programmer this time around, like they did in the previous film. And he asked me if I would come do the programming for him. So that's how our collaboration began, and we made the film Arabesque. That was something. What did you think at that time? Were you clear that this is something that moves on and that is important for you and your life and, and your work? Or was it just more like a hobby? What did you do at that time to earn money and live? Let's say this, ask, I want to ask this way. I think I... Um... I I had a house that had two units and I was renting out one of the units. So I was able to squeak by. But um, the uh, working with, with John was terrific. And of course, I um, was focused on that 100%. When you, when you um, worked with John, um, this was already the digital world? Because yes. You also worked in the analog world. So uh, I, I saw that you have a big interest, obviously, in the analog computing systems, too. So yes. can you 
maybe explain where you think they belong together and where they evolve and, and how you think they, they fit together? They're very different, of course, when you're actually using them to, to make work. Whitney had, had built this um, uh, motion control animation stand in the 50s using an analog computer. And, and in the 60s, he got to do digital um, work when he worked for uh, IBM and um, at, also at Caltech and then at a company called Triple I. And he had made uh, a film called Matrix 3 at Triple I, and that's when they had provided the programmer. But then when he um, went back to make Arabesque, they couldn't afford to give him the programmer, and that's when I got involved. So we were already on his fourth or fifth digital film by that time, that was the early 70s. Uh, the analog computers, um, tend to be more hands-on equipment. They involve patching cables and turning dials, whereas in the digital world, you know that you're writing code for the computer to execute, and it's it's more of a linguistic interaction than you know mechanical. So, did you ever work with an analog system, or did you only work digital? I never did myself. I have only been interested in digital computers because of the, because um, I was interested in programming and generative art, which is, um, you know, based on the process of creating the work. Well, several works of yours were from the 70s. So um, how did you um, manage to do them? And can you give us uh, some, some information? Was that at a university or, or how, how, did it, how did they happen? Yes. Well, in the same way that, that um, Whitney had gone from IBM to Caltech to III, I had to also find access to uh, the big machines uh, in the institutions. And after the Jet Propulsion Lab at CalArts, um, I had arranged with John that I would program his film Arabesque at III if I also got to use the computers at III to make my films. So I made a film there at III. And, um, and then I went to uh, the University of Illinois in Chicago. They had a very advanced computer graphics system called GRASS. And uh, I was able to use them as uh, a research associate on campus, and, and, uh, but only you know, at night and when no one else was using them, which is typical. Pioneers are usually working on the off hours when no one else is using the equipment. Um, and then, uh, and then we're into the eighties, and 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 uh, small machines became available, and I was able to uh, acquire uh, a small machine called the UV One. Uh, which also came out of Chicago and came out of the whole uh, um, effort to write the grass language. They rewrote it for a small machine and um, called the Z-Grass. And so I was made a film in the mid eighties on the Z-Grass machine. That's, that's calculated. By the way, did you only do black and white work? I'm mainly interested in the algorithm, algorithmic generated imagery. When I made, uh, the film was called First Fig, and I got back black and white uh, film from the lab and then re-photographed it with color filters. This was the standard operation that Whitney had made all of his films with. Got black and white material originally and then re-photographed it on an optical printer through color filters. Well, when I was doing that, I realized that this was um, not algorithmic process and uh, I didn't quite want to uh, waste my time on that basically. So after that I decided that I would only um, deal with parameters that I could control from within the program. And so thinking I'll oh, eventually color will be a, a parameter but in the meantime um, I will just make things in black and white. The other reason why black and white is important to me is because you don't get um, 
the only way I can say it is 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 dazzled or distracted by your color. It makes you focus on the movement. And I'm particularly interested in the art of motion, and um, <clears throat> and so it seems to emphasize the motion when it's in black and white. For me, it's an emphasis on choreography. What is, by the way, what is Larry doing uh, today? Uh, is he still making computer animation, or are you just uh, uh, relaxing? No, he's not relaxing, and but he's trying hard. <laughs> Good. Um, I've been um, focused on the idea of software and and the language that you use to describe what it is you want to draw. So, um, having having been through several languages from Fortran and um, uh, a special graphics language called RAP which is a research language, and then to the grass language in Chicago. I, I got a, uh, you know, these ideas of what um, the language should be like in order to describe the kinds of things that I'm doing. So I formulated this um, syntax for a graphics programming language, which I'm calling Oscar. And I've been working with a compiler writer to generate this language. And uh, I've just recently started working with it. So we'll see what happens. But this is a language that's only for you or, or do also students or somebody else use it? Is it open to, to be used or is it just for you yourself? No one else is working at it with it at the moment um, because we haven't really released it. I need to work more on the manual and make it more uh, available to people, but it would certainly be open if anyone else wanted to do the kinds of things that I've been doing, it would work for them. But it seems a little specialized to me. But if uh, someone is interested in using it, I'm all for it. But you just mentioned we are doing, uh, working on it. So that means you are doing it with, with the team, in a team uh, with other people, with friends? I have, I have, I have one other collaborator. He's he actually knows about languages and can write the compiler for the language. And and can you can you give me a, an idea uh, what what the speciality of of the software is? What you can do very well, uh, or why you love it so much? Uh, it's it's very difficult to describe, <laughs> but I could say in general, it's it's like a picture description language yeah. where you describe. Um, picture based on some primitive uh, objects and you iterate them and move them over time so they have transformations. And so you can define them, uh, your picture as a function of the iteration or a function of time. And then you can build more pictures on top of that and more pictures on top of it. So there's a hierarchical structure. It uh, maybe I do not really understand it, but I have the feeling at least that that would be something that Herbert would be very delighted to know. And uh, so he, he would uh, be very interested to get more information about that. I think it's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I have one question. Um, you can tell me whether you want to do that publicly or not. Um, I would so much love to hear a, a few words from your side. Uh, about Star Wars, because oh. you're, you're, I know, uh, I have the feeling that the Star Wars uh, subject is not very interesting for you. But, uh, you know, for Herbert and me, it was, it was something very special when we saw it first time in, in the cinema. Give me some, some infos how it worked and how you did come to that job and uh, was it was it incidentally or how or was it Whitney's con connections? How did it come? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't Whitney, but it was CalArts because a lot of CalArts students were working on the film. Um, uh, George Lucas, the director, had had hired a number of students from different film schools around Los Angeles, and um, someone who was working on the film knew that the scene needed some animation. They weren't quite sure whether they were going to do it by hand animation or computer animation or what, but they were opening uh, it up to proposals. And so he called me 
knowing that I had made that film from Jet Propulsion Lab, that it was like the first computer animated film at CalArts, so pretty much all the CalArts students knew about it. So he called me <clears throat> thinking I might be interested in it and uh, submit a proposal, which I did. And, uh, and so I got the job and I uh, went to Chicago to work on the grass system that I made this other film on. And um, and did the animation there. Oh, it's a milestone in in cinema. It's first time that that a digital vector graphics, as far as I know, uh, was used in a commercial uh, block blockbuster, isn't it? Vector, if you qualify it as vector graphics, is true. The previous example was more of an image processing. Uh, thing that um, was in the West World where they simulated the view of a of a robot by by processing it, but it wasn't vector yet. So um, let's come uh, maybe in, in the second uh, part of our talk a bit to the to the summit and the film night, and um, I think it would be nice to get some background information how you did the selections. Well, you know, the um, SIGGRAPH conference, where the films are shown every year, uh, I, I went throughout the 80s, 70s and 80s, uh, and every year you could see the latest development in computer graphics and the latest example of, of the latest techniques. So I, I went through these programs that were on SIGGRAPH, and I looked for things that were... Uh, milestones in the development technically, but also were interesting artistically as well, and tried to um, choose those which had both elements in them. Can you give that, could you explain that maybe uh, in three examples uh, where you have that combination perfectly fit, um, artistically important, but also um, technically um, a step forward? Well, you could look at um, Carl Sims movie, Particle Dreams. Um, this was a, an early example of using particle systems. And, yeah, it, and it, in addition to that, it, it's a beautiful film. How about the, the pixelation? Do you, do you like that film? Oh, Pixelation. Now, uh, yes, this is Lillian Schwartz's film. Uh, it was made on the B-Flick system at uh, Bell Labs that Ken Knowlton developed. And also Stan Vanderbeek worked on that uh, system as well. Uh, we have a, a great little clip of uh, Stan Vanderbeek and Ken Knowlton talking about uh, the work there. And I did try to include some of these uh, documentation films that show the pioneers uh, explaining their work or explaining their systems that they developed. From my, perspe from my perspective, also, um, the rhythm is, is very important because it had, it had this movement of, of bodies, of, of uh, living, living beings uh, first time constructed from the in internal view uh, i think that is also very important and also the artwork is very nice yes i agree the um the dancers movement is very natural and believable and there's also the birds flying around as it's demonstrating the flocking behavior this is craig reynolds algorithm that where he developed how um birds and fish and flocking um, uh, are animated. Latham is, is also very beautiful and also a step forward in, in, in programming. And this is, a, as far as I understand, it's a simulation software for evolutionary processes, but it is used in a wonderful uh, style and, and artistic way. Say, yes. agree? Yes, I agree. I'm personally very interested in the evolutionary software because it's based on parametrically defined imagery and then you evolve the parameters as if they were a genotype for your uh, phenotype, to use the biological terms. 
So, um, so it um, that's that's definitely an example of a, both a technical and an artistic breakthrough. And you had one uh, uh, film where you said the fractals, first time fractals were used. In oh, fractals! Yes, that's a beautiful film by um, Lauren Carpenter. Lauren Carpenter. Lauren Carpenter, and he was working in Boeing at the time. And he used fractals to render very detailed mountains, landscapes. It was the first time to do that. And of course, we do that all the time now. It's interesting to see these techniques appear at SIGGRAPH for the first time, where, where the developers are presenting them. And then within a few years, they're, they're off the shelf in uh, commercial software, and everybody's using them. It's, it's uh, fascinating. So um, thanks a lot, Larry, for being with me and sharing your, your thoughts and, and memories uh, of the past. And I'm so much looking forward to your presentation in, in Berlin. And have a safe trip uh, to Berlin and to Germany. And uh, yeah, I would say bye bye. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye.